Hi friends, welcome back. This is Mrs. Maldonado. We have another first grade summer video lesson for you. We are on lesson number 27. So let's get started, boys and girls. Okay, I have a reading for you today. And the title of our book is Insects and Spiders. And it is by Cynthia O'Brien and Jessica Pegas. So as you know, this is our table of contents for chapter one. What are insects and spiders? Starting on page two. Chapter three, body part detective on starting on page 10. Then we have chapter three, a creepy crawly life starting on page 16. And chapter four, amazing homes starting on chapter 24. For today, boys and girls, we will be reading chapter four. Okay, we will be learning about amazing homes. Everyone needs a place to live. Insects use sand, dirt, grass, or saliva to build a home. Some work together and some work alone. Some small beetles make their home under just one leaf. A termite colony can build a mound taller than a person or even a giraffe. Wow, that is pretty amazing, boys and girls. Look how big this termite mound is. And this is inside a termite mound. This is what it looks like. So look at how big a giraffe is. We know that giraffes are really, really tall. And that mound is taller than a giraffe. So those insects are pretty amazing in building their home, aren't they? So for this page, boys and girls, page 24, we have our word that is bolded so it could stand out, okay? And that word is colony. So that is our smart word, our vocabulary word. And colony, boys and girls, means a group of animals living together. Okay, so now we're gonna start reading on page 25. Honeybees and bumblebees also live in a colony. Each bee in the colony has a job. The queen bee lays the eggs. The worker bees make wax to build the hive. They also gather food. Okay, so we have another uh, vocabulary word or smart word that's bolded so it stands out so we could see it. Okay, and that word is hive. And a hive, boys and girls, is a home built by bumblebees or honeybees. So this is inside a beehive. So here are the bees and um, they're working really hard to make some honey. So that is their hive. Okay, it says that um, they, they also live in a colony and the queen bee lays the eggs and the worker bees make the wax to build the hive. And they also gather food. So everybody has a job in the beehive, boys and girls. There are worker bees, there's queen bees, and there's all kinds of different jobs for them to do. And everybody has a job. Webs and burrows. The spider's body makes strong silk thread. Many spiders use the silk to make webs. The orb weaver spider's web looks like a bicycle wheel. The web is sticky. This catches insects for the spider to eat. So this is the orb weaver spider in its web. Well, boys and girls, this web looks pretty amazing as well. It looks like maybe it might have a little bit of uh, dew drops or some kind of water on it. It has like little drops of water. It kind of even looks like maybe like beads, so cool. All right, so let's read the next page, page 27. Not all spiders spin webs. The trapdoor spider makes a burrow in the ground. Then it builds a door to cover the hole. It lays its eggs in the burrow. It also uses it to surprise its prey. It opens the door quickly and snatches up its lunch. So this on the top, boys and girls, is the trapdoor spider in its burrow. So here is a spider, and this is the door. It kind of like popped open, okay? And whenever it says that whenever um, there's a prey out there or some food that that spider wants to eat, it quickly opens up 
the door and snatches its food for lunch. Okay, so we have our word, our vocabulary word, our smart word is webs. And this word, boys and girls, is a net made from silky thread. And this here at the bottom, boys and girls, what a colorful spider. That is a wasp spider. It's probably called a wasp spider because look at its um, thorax here, its body part here. It kind of looks like a bee, right? Like a wasp. That's probably where it gets its name, the wasp spider. Pretty interesting things that uh, spiders do. They have, they build webs, they have burrows, okay? And look how, it, what interesting colors they have as well. So spiders can be all kinds of colors. Not, um, they're not all black and brown. Look how colorful this one is. Pretty neat. Extreme pets. Would you like an insect or a spider as a pet? They are fun to watch. But like any pet, you need to take care of them. They need a safe, warm home like a glass tank or a container of soil. They need food to eat. Many insects eat plants. You can find leaves for them to eat. Some insects eat other insects. You can buy these from the pet store. So boys and girls, look at this uh, stick insect. It says that some people have spiders or insects as pets. Would you like to have a spider or an insect as a pet? I don't think I would want to have a spider or an insect as a pet, but that's just my opinion. Maybe other people like to have an insect or a spider as a pet. So let's read about these kinds of pets that people have in their homes that are insects and spiders. Okay, the first one is a Chilean rose tarantula, eats crickets and other insects. So look at it, boys and girls. Can you imagine having a big tarantula on the palm of your hand? Wow, I don't think I'd be able to do that. The hissing cockroach hisses by pushing air through its body. So some people have Madagascar hissing cockroaches as pets. The next one is an ant lion. Ant lions make holes in the sand to catch their prey, which are ants. These are ant lion holes. Rainbow stag beetles eat apples and bananas. This is a rainbow stag beater, beetle. So this, boys and girls, the beetle actually looks pretty cool, very beautiful. Um, it's a rainbow, so it changes colors, but I still don't think I would want to have one of those as a pet. Use your smart words. How would you get ready for a pet insect or spider? Point to the pictures that could be useful in your new animal's home. Okay, so we have a birdhouse. We have a dog collar, a fishbowl. We have a fly, a plant, a rawhide bone. We have soil and we have a tank. So the question is again, how would you get ready for a pet insect or spider? So which one of these things do you think that could be useful in having a pet insect or spider? Uh, do you think a pet insect or spider would uh, live in a birdhouse? Mm, probably not. We wouldn't need a dog collar. We would not need a fishbowl. Well, maybe a fly because it said in some insects eat other insects. So we could probably use a fly. We said not a birdhouse, not a dog collar, not a fishbowl. We could use a plant because some insects need uh, live in plants. I don't think they would need a rawhide bone, but I think they would. Uh, some would need some soil because some, uh, remember they have burrows, they live in burrows, and we also would need a tank because that's where we would keep uh, some of our insects or our spiders. They need a tank to live in. Okay, so now we're going to talk like a scientist. How is your home like an insect or spider home? How is it different? Pretend you are renting your home to a spider. 
What would the spider say about where you lived? What would it like? Use your smart words. Well, boys and girls, can you imagine if you had an insect or a spider to come live at your house? And to rent it means that you would have to leave and they would come live here instead. What do you think they would say about your home? Okay, so now we have our smart words glossary, camouflage. And this word means a way of hiding or disguising oneself. We have colony, a group of animals living together. We have the compound eye, an eye made up of hundreds or thousands of tiny lenses. We have an egg sac, which is a pouch made of silk that protects a spider's eggs. We also have a hive, a home built by bumblebees or honeybees, an insect, which is an animal with six legs and a body divided into three parts, larva, a young insect or animal that changes as it grows, and then we have life cycle, a series of changes that happen over the life of an animal or plant. We also have nectar, that it's a sugary liquid made by flowers. We have pupa, the stage between a larva and an adult insect. We have spider, an animal with eight legs and a body divided into two parts. And finally, we have web, a net made from silky thread. So those are our smart words, boys and girls, for our insect and spider book that we read. We're all done with all the four chapters. We just reviewed all of our smart words. So now let's go ahead and um, do um, something fun, boys and girls. And for this, you are going to draw a fly. Okay, boys and girls, so now it's your turn to draw a fly. So this is a video of a fly-directed drawing. It's how to draw a fly step by step. Okay, it's an insect drawing easy for beginners. So you can go ahead and get a piece of paper, whatever paper you have, and you can either use a pencil, a crayon, a marker, whatever you wanna use is okay as well. All right, boys and girls, so let's get started with our drawing.
Okay, boys and girls, so that is uh, the finished product of our fly directed drawing. So you can color your fly whatever uh, color you want to color your fly. Maybe you can make it into a fly guy if you wanted to. Okay, so now you'll know how to draw a fly. So before, um, before we finish, boys and girls, I wanted to uh, review with you um, the insect parts. Okay, we know that the ins an insect has how many body parts? It has one, whoops, it has one, the head, okay, two, and three. So it has one, two, three. And then it has how many legs? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. We know that an insect has six legs and it also has three body parts. But for a spider, boys and girls, a spider is different. Okay, remember we were learning about spiders? Okay, and the spiders, uh, they have two body parts, one and two. It's kind of hard to see in these pictures, but one and two. And then it has eight legs, unlike a insect okay so let's count one two three four five six seven and eight so a spider has eight legs and it has two body parts boys and girls and an insect has three body parts and six legs we also reviewed talked about uh extreme pets um, some pets that people have that are sometimes insects, uh, sometimes spiders, boys and girls. So that is pretty, um, pretty unique that some people would like to have these kinds of pets at home. And we, we have to take care of them just like any other pet, boys and girls. We care for whatever uh, pets we have at home. So I just wanted to review those things with you, boys and girls. And I hope you've enjoyed this book of uh, spiders and insects we've learned a lot and uh, let's see what we're gonna be reading about next I want you to have an awesome day and until next time